Are you a React.js developer? Do you want to use React.js to build your own Chrome extension, but you're too lazy to configure the project setup? Do you want to learn yet another JavaScript framework? If you respond yes to all of these, then this is a video for you. Introducing the Plasmo framework, the JavaScript framework for making browser extensions. So we're going to talk about Plasmo here, which is their site, develop, test, publish browser extensions. I've used Plasmo to make some personal projects and we're going to walk through them. So what Plasmo does is it sort of gives you batteries included starting point to create your own browser extension without having to configure your project setup for React.js. So it uses React.js to create browser extensions, right? So let's take a look. So here is the Plasmo GitHub repository in GitHub. So Plasmo HQ Plasmo. So we're going to take a short look into the GitHub repo to see what it has in store for us. So we just scroll down here. Plasmo framework, the framework that is battery packed for browser extension SDK made by hackers for hackers. Build your product and stop worrying about config files. That is true. All right, so let's talk about the features that it has. First class React plus TypeScript support. So out of the box, Plasmo does support React. It also supports Next.js, which we're going to take a look later. Declarative development with manifest.json that is auto-generated. So Plasmo sets the project up in a way where the manifest.json, which is common when you set up a browser extension, when you create one, is automatically generated on the fly. So live reloading, when you're working on your project and you make some code changes, it's going to get reflected directly in the browser extension in real time. So sort of like hot reload if you're working with React. Dot .env files, out of the box, Plasmo framework does support env files. So if you wanted to have some environment variables together with your Chrome extension, you could do that. Remote code bundling, automated deployment, and many, many more, right? So enough with the repo. Let's take a look at their site, the doc documentation. I think it's really amazing um, that they've set up. So we're at the docs.plasmo.com, which is their documentation site for if you want to bootstrap your Chrome extension project with the Plasmo framework. The cool thing about this is if we go down here in their documentation, you can see that they have quick starts for many different tools that we're familiar with, right? So if you wanted to use Next.js, if you wanted, and they also have repositories with, with these. So you can see with Next.js for an example. So if you just right click and open that here, you'll, you'll be taken to a repository that shows you how to set up the project with Next.js if you wanted to. Some of the different quick starts they have is Stripe, Redux, Tailwind CSS, Super base firebase i think firebase is good google analytics for some reason and the chrome storage api right so one of the things that the plasmo team has built is the storage api they have this they have their own npm dependency called plasmo hq storage so the plasmo hq storage dependency is a layer of abstraction on top of existing storage apis as you can see here is a utility library from plasmo that abstracts away the persistent storage apis so it just allows the developer to use the existing apis in a way where you don't have to set up the underlying um, apis beneath them if that makes any sense. So you can see there's some example here for hooks. So we're going to try and bootstrap a Plasmo HQ project. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to VS Code. So we're at VS Code to bootstrap our Plasmo project to create our first Chrome extension with the Plasmo framework. So the Plasmo team recommends that we use PNPM as our package manager. There is an option to use NPM, but for this case, we're going to be using PNPM. So to bootstrap a Plasmo project to create your first Chrome extension, you need to run the command pnpm vlx plasmo init and then your project name let's just name the project as example plasmo and then click enter and we're just going to wait for that to resolve so you may have issues where the progress would just get stuck at a specific number so it's really important for you to just wait for it to resolve it's going to resolve itself like you could see here it gets stuck at around 411 resolved and 395 reused just wait for it it's going to resolve itself and we're just going to wait for the project to bootstrap install all the necessary dependencies and create our boilerplate all right so after a century has passed our project is finally ready 
already. All right, so to start hacking, run cd example plasmo. So we're just going to cd into the directory, example plasmo here. So if we open the folder here, this is the folder that the bootstrap has created for us. You're going to see popup.tsx, uh, readme.md, tsconfig, and your node modules. Everything should be fairly familiar. So we also have our package.json here. One thing I'd like to bring up is since the manifest.json is automatically generated, any of the configurations for your manifest should be declared in this manifest object here in the package.json. This is where you put your additional configuration if you want to modify the manifest. All right, so the first thing we'd like to do is to run the dev server. So let's just clear this here. Let's clear our console and we'd want to run pnpm dev. What it's going to do is it's going to start the extension development server. It does create this folder called build. And you can see in this build folder, we now have a directory in here called chrome-mv3-dev. So we're going to attempt to load this build into our Chrome browser so we could see what the initial project looks like. So to load the Chrome extension build to your browser, to your Chrome browser, you want to navigate to your Chrome browser and then you'd want to enter Chrome colon double forward slash and then extension. So this will take you to a page similar to this. Please make sure you have the developer mode switch enabled. Let me just zoom in here. So make sure this one is enabled. And then what you want to do is you want to click load unpack, right? So our extension is not yet packed. It's a development build. It's not a production build. So we're just going to click this. So navigate to the directory of where you started your Plasmo project and then into the build directory and then you're going to see chrome-mv3-dev. So you'd want to select that folder and you're going to see that it loads in. So by default, this is what it's going to look like. Example, Plasmo 0.0.0, a basic Plasmo extension. So at this point, the development build for the Chrome extension has been loaded into our Chrome browser. So what you want to do is you want to click on the extensions and and then you want to click here. You can see example Plasmo. You want to pin it so that you could see what it looks like. And then here you want to left click it and you're going to see welcome to your Plasmo extension. So this is the default project that you're initially going to be greeted with, right? So we're going to go back to our project. We're going to go to the popup.tsx, which is the component, which is the entry point for a pop-up component. There are many components that you could build with Plasmo. You could create a background worker. You could create a new tab or an options, but we're going to be taking a look at the pop-up TSX. So let's just see the hot reload or live reload in action. So it used to say Plasmo extension. Let's say hello world extension. We're going to go back to our Chrome browser and we're going to see that it hot reloads, right? So it changed the extension in real time. So welcome to your hello world extension. And that's how you start a Plasmo project. All right. So after loading our Plasma extension to the browser, let's actually add some browser extension capabilities to the code because right now it doesn't really do anything, right? It's not really leveraging its browser extension capability, which is accessing the Chrome APIs if we want to. So first, we're going to modify the code slightly to add the functionality of printing the current active tab URL on the extension. So how do we do that? So first, we need to go to the package.json. This should be the default package.json when we bootstrapped our project, we didn't really add any additional dependencies here. Now we have to add the tabs permission in the manifest object within the package.json for us to be able to query the active tab URL. So from here, we're going to go to the manifest section. We're going to add a comma here and then declare permissions, which is also an array which takes in an array of permissions. So here we include tabs, right? This will allow us to be able to access the tab, get the active URL that we could print to our extension. So from here, we go to the popup.tsx and we're going to modify the code slightly. First, we're going to import use effect here, and then we're going to change data to current URL, current URL, and then set current URL, which is a string. So remember, this is TypeScript. So we can actually declare the types here in the use state. And then we're going to create a function, right? So here we're going to do const get current URL equals an async function, an arrow function. And then we're going to do const and then an array tab is equal to await chrome.tabs.query because we're querying the tab which is why we enabled the tab permission in the manifest within the package.json a while ago. And then we want to put in the condition, right? So this is an object that takes in query info. We want to get the active tab. We also want current window 
to true. And this will allow us to get the current window tab context, right? So from here, we can do set current URL, and then we're going to do tab dot URL, right? So this will allow us to get the current tab, the active current tab, and then set the URL to our state here, which is the current URL. All right. So for us to be able to display these changes, we're going to go to the H1. We're going to remove this input here. We don't need it anymore. And then from the H1 tag, we're going to do you are currently at and then curly braces current URL. All right. So once that's done, we want to do a use effect because we always want to change the state of the current URL depending on if the current URL changes, right? So we want to be able to display it as real time as possible. So let's do a use effect. Use effect takes in a function here and then an array of dependencies. So from here, we're just going to run the get current URL function, which is an async function, and then pass in the current URL as the dependency. So use effect will basically run this get current URL whenever the current URL changes, right? So let's try to run the dev server. So it would rebuild the Chrome extension and let's see what we have. PNPM dev. So it says, extension reloaded in 1000 milliseconds. So let's check the extension. So I'm currently at dev.tr, dev.2. So let's check the Chrome extension to see. And you can see here, you're currently at dev.2. So let's go to extensions. Let's click it again. And you can see you are currently at Chrome extension. So if you face any issues with Plasmo and you're, it's not hot reloading correctly, which I have faced in the past, uh, make sure you go to the Chrome extensions URL and then try to click this refresh button, right? So this will update your extension. In my experience, it's more reliable to do it this way than to rely on the hot reload. Sometimes it hot reloads, sometimes there are errors. And when errors happen, the hot reload doesn't really function properly that good, if that makes sense. So make sure to click this um, if the hot reload isn't working out. If your changes aren't reflected directly because an error happened, make sure to always click this button here to refresh the extension. So I'd like to show you guys an extension that I made called vulnerability. It's kind of spelled in a way where it's trendy. So if we go up here to the top right of the extensions, you can see that there's a extension here that I packed called VR and BLTY. So if we click that, it's going to check if the current domain has any previous data breaches, right? So this is powered by the I have been pawned API. Basically, whenever you open this extension, it's going to check the current domain similar to the method that I I showed you guys a while ago and it's going to check the I have been pawned API to see if previous data breaches have occurred for the domain, right? So here you can see that we're at facebook.com and it says one data breach. So one thing you could do if you wanted to use the extension is you could click this badge here. In this case, it says one data breach. So if we click this, you could see here all of the previous data breaches that have occurred by date. So you can see here Facebook data breaches with the icon and the date. So if you click this, it's going to show you guys the domain domain where the data breach occurred. In this case, it's going to be facebook.com, how many users were affected, and then the data that was breached, right? So we have here for Facebook, date of birth, email addresses, employers, genders, geographic locations, names, phone numbers, relationship statuses. That would be good to know, I guess. So it's basically an extension that uses the Chrome API capabilities. So this is one of the projects that I have created. If we go to another domain that hasn't had a previous data breach, for example, called Google, google.com and then we click the extension again you're going to see that it has no data breaches in this case if you click the no breaches badge here it's not going to show anything because there has been no data breaches so there would be no information to show all right so this is just an example of what you could create with the plasmo framework so let's take a look at the github repo this code is open source it's available in my github so feel free to check it out if you guys want to have a look so here's the github repo of the extension i, I just showed you guys called vulnerability or vulnerability. That's how I intended to pronounce that. <laughs> All right. So if you guys want to check the code that I wrote to be able to develop this extension using the Plasmo framework, it's all free. You could check it out here. Although I haven't updated the readme yet at this point, maybe I'll update it after I release the video, but feel free to check this out if you'd want to see. So we're going to take a brief look into the code to see what I did. All right. So this is the code files for the vulnerability extension that I just created. If you look at the directory, everything will look fairly similar to what I just showed you guys a while ago. First, let's take a look at the popup.tsx. 
there is a configuration where instead of having the pop up being here in the root directory, the Plasmo team has an option where you could place your pop ups, your option pages, basically anything that has to do with extension inside the source directory, right? So for us to be able to do that, you just have to go to the tsconfig.json and ensure your paths look similar to this. It may look different if you haven't configured it yet, but make sure it has this source here in this array. All right. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the pop up tsx you can see here that we have some directories for hooks and the pop-up some constants and then some types so if we go to the pop-up directory you're going to see an index.tsx this would be the entry point for the pop-up and you can see here that i'm using a library for the ui called mantine right so here i'm using mantine core because i'm not really good at css i'm not a css god unlike other people so i import the components from the mantine core and you could just do like pnpm install you could install any React library that you'd like. So you could use Material UI, Ant Design. In my case, I went for Mantine Core. Uh, Mantin UI, which I really like. So it's like any other React project. So you can see here we have the styles here. You can see that there are some components, extension title, which is the vulnerability title, right? In the extension, you can see that there's a domain component that shows the domain. And then here is the pop up, right? So if you take a look at the code, it's like any other React project, right? It can be used as a Chrome extension. But in terms of writing the code for your extension, it's going to be similar to any other React project. By default, Plasmo ships with an icon. And if we take a look at the extension I just made, you're going to see that the icon is actually different from the default Plasmo icon. So if you wanted to change the icon of your extension, you'd want to go to assets, right? You'd want to navigate to the assets folder and you'd like to rename any icon for extension to icon512.png. So you can see here, this is the icon for my extension, the vulnerability extension. If you rename the asset here as icon512.png, Plasmo will Will automatically resize it. So if we go to the dot plasmo directory and we see here gen assets, you can see here that icon 16, icon 48, icon 128 is basically a lower resolution of that initial icon 512.png that I showed you guys, right? So you can see icon 128, 48, icon 16. If you wanted to change your extension icon, this would be the way to do it. Just place a PNG in here in the assets folder, rename it as icon 512.png. Also make sure that the dimensions of your icon is 512 by 512 and then you should be good if you wanted to submit your extension to the chrome extension store what would you have to do well if you have some experience you'll know that the chrome extension store expects you to upload a zip file right so the plasmo team has also thought about that and the way for you to do it is you just have to run this command pnpm build dash dash and then dash dash zip when you run this command, it's going to bundle the extensions and zip it up. So you could just upload the zip file of the extension directly to the Chrome extension store. So you could see here, finished in 6,000 milliseconds, zip package. And then this would be like how many bytes your extension is. And then for you to be able to view that, you just go into the build folder and you can see here we have chrome-mv3-prod.zip. So this is the build where you would upload this to the Chrome extension store if you'd want to submit it. All right, so I guess that's it, guys. Um, thanks for watching this video and good luck making your extensions.